Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about people, what some people just call sibling robbery. And now, now that's whenever, a lot of times people call it when you're children, but I want, even into adulthood. And that's what I want to talk about, when it's in adulthood, and something that's probably started off when you were a child. But I think that in the ones that are in, you know, the thoughts that are in my mind, it goes beyond that. Um, or some people would say it's just really bad example of it, or really bad kind of. These these are fictional, you know, hypothetical, you know, made up stories. So I've experienced a lot, heard a lot, seen a lot of what siblings can do to one another. Okay, in reality, really, what they can do to one another, and some of it is just unbelievable uh, to the extent of. When a sibling is, say, histri histrionic, uh, narcissistic histrionic blend, that's what I've seen way too much of in my life, and that sibling wants so much attention to be set on them that the sibling tells their, um, in this case, say, a husband, that, that you, say, you're, you're female, or it doesn't matter, male or female, that you were really mean to them as children and on and on. Now the husband's a Bubba, you know, one of those Bubba, uh, Bubba's, and thinks he's going to take it into his own hands and ensures when you're around that he's carrying a gun. When you don't, when you're young, you don't really understand why, you know, you just think this is a Bubba. But no, it's meant intentionally for you. If you say anything, the gun will be in your face, as you found out later on. Yeah. That's one of them. Now, it can be an extreme, you know, I've seen extremes. Uh, not just on mine now. But it can be an extreme like that or where they actually do something. Or, you know, like when um, a sibling behind your back ruins your marriage. Or your potential marriage. You know, your potential uh, bride or groom, whatever. And... They ruin it behind your back because of this rivalry. They they don't want you to be happy at all. Now, like I said, some people would just call it that. Some people would call it like narcissistic or histrionic cluster B behaviors and um, you know, abuse. So many different things people call it toxic on and on. But yeah, siblings can be pretty bad. And they can also be like a Patty Duke kind of thing <laughs> with cousins or uh, it can be your aunts and uncles, your uh, your own grandparents or parents. But when, as far as siblings, it can be your cousins around your age, you know, that generation of set of cousins and uh, or brothers and sisters. You, but I know do know that some <clears throat> cousins along that line doesn't have to be your cousins can be your in-laws that they are they they feel the same way like kind of like they're a sibling and they're having this ri rivalry with you not them but with you that can happen too anyway <clears throat> now some people are going to have a difficult time with thinking that their own siblings or cousins like i said would do such a bad, you know, do such bad things behind their back, tell people, but it happens. And for some people, what winds up happening is they have to go no contact. You know, once you're an adult, you're on, out on your own, and you you see, you have to go no contact with them because they're doing this. And there, there will probably, a good chance, I don't say, wouldn't say 100%, none of this is 100%, none of this is counseling or advice. Yeah, just my opinions, I could be wrong, but they, you know, would continue doing it behind your back. Even if you're you're no longer in contact with them behind your back, they could be telling people all kinds of bad things about you and that you said this, that they act as though you're still in with the family. You might have to go with no contact with everybody in the family, and, but they're still going to act like you are there. So that they get that attention they want. They get that sympathy they want or empathy they want. Um, they want that attention, negative, you know, th that kind of positive attention, but they don't care if it's negative either. Like, they might tell somebody who doesn't believe them. So, no, I know for a fact they're not in contact with you, you know, and so you're making this crap up. 
<laughs> that kind of thing. They don't care. They're still getting somebody's attention. You know, the, the ones I have seen, the, the ones who are more histrionic, they really don't care. And they really don't care how bad they can make it for that other person. All that they're cared about is that they get that attention and they're winning to them. They're winning. You know, they want to say that they are better than their sibling. And so to them, that's winning. You know, it's, like I said, it's not a one-size-fits-all. This is not counseling advice. None of that. When it, now, when it comes to cluster B behaviors, I think some people think that the histrionics, I'm not talking about diagnosed personality disorder, just the behaviors of um, people who are, you know, kind of histrionic, that I think some people think they're the mildest. Oh, no. <laughs> Hasn't been my experience. <clears throat> like I said, they don't care about what happens to the person. They, they want to, they, they're so theatrical and so dramatic, you know, drama queens and drama kings. That they, they, to get that attention they want, they'll say all these things and, like I said, Bubba, uh, Bubba might come after you, but they don't care. They're getting what they want, their attention. They're, they're winning to them, and they're getting that attention. They can be bad, really bad. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, you haven't already, click the circle icon. If you want to watch another video on this channel, click one of the rectangles, like, subscribe, comment, and share on your own social media if you would. I'll talk to you on another video. Bye.